Welcome to today's video on job properties. In this tutorial I am using Cabinet Vision Solid Standard version 9. The first step in beginning a new job is to fill in the properties for the job. You do not have to customise these in order to begin drawing a plan, however spending a few minutes here to make your selections will ensure the design process is a lot more efficient and you will also minimise the amount of modifications you need to make in your drawing. So let's go through the properties to understand how they work. Remember, the options in the properties will vary slightly depending on the level of software you are using, so today I will be covering the most common properties as found in Cabinet Vision Solid Standard. The first option is for job information. The job number field will be the file name that the job is saved under, so this is the main field you will need to fill in. It does not have to be an actual number, it can be a name or a combination of letters and numbers. No punctuation should be used in these fields. You do not have to add any information into the purchase order description or customer fields, but adding the details here provides information that can be used in templates you may create in other areas such as the drawings page, where there are variables available which will look to the information you have entered here. The job comment field is simply an area you can add additional information if you wish, and the job schedule option is available for you to assign dates to the different stages of your project. Next are the room properties. The general tab allows you to add more descriptive information about the room name and type. Filling in these features is optional and not necessary to complete a job. The material option allows you to select a unique material schedule for the room should you have customised one set up. The room finishes are for visual rendering purposes only. You are not choosing the actual material here, just a colour being the finish or pattern being the texture for the material. The Set a System Defaults button should be selected if you wish for all future jobs to default with the same selections. This button appears on many of the tabs here in the Properties screen so that you can preset your most common choices. Room layout is important in determining what height your walls will be drawn at. The soffit height is the distance between the tops of your cabinets and the ceiling and is used to reference where your wall cabinets are positioned on the elevation. The vertical positional height is simply another optional reference that can be used should you choose to save any items in your catalogue to read to this field. Now you can select your cabinet properties. The construction tab allows you to choose between cabinet and drawer constructions that you have potentially set up and customised yourself. The cabinet materials tab is where you make your selections to determine what material or combination of materials your base and upper carcasses will be made out of. You can also select a material schedule here for any draw boxes and rollouts. The selections are made from assembly schedules you will have already set up. Notice how the standard material schedule is different than the exposed interior material schedule. Typically the standard selection will be a schedule that includes a combination of white melamine parts for internal parts and colour parts for any scene parts. The exposed interior selection, however, will generally consist entirely of coloured parts to all internal parts as required for an open shelf cabinet. To utilise the exposed interior material schedule selection on a cabinet, when you are in a job, right click on the cabinet and select properties. Then enable the exposed interior option. Checking this option means the cabinet will no longer read to the standard material schedule, but rather the exposed interior schedule. You will also note that there are buttons here reading Modify for this job. The function of this button is so that you can make changes to the selected material schedule that will only apply to this job. The Hardware tab allows you to select preset material schedules for the pools, which are handles, draw guides, which are runners and hinges in the job. The beaded frames option only becomes available if the hinge schedule you select uses an inset hinge and you would only need to select a bead profile if you were using a construction method that has been set up to build face frame cabinets. You can also select a schedule for sliding door rails here. The doors tab is where you select the door style for the job as well as the material schedules for the doors and panels. Depending on how the door style type has been set up, you may also be able to select different profiles for edge details on the door. Door schedules are created in the Material Schedules Manager and door styles are set up in the door catalogue. You can make the selections here for all doors within the job or you can expand a particular category to make a selection for a more specific group of doors or panels. 
The Remove Overrides button will remove any preset overrides within the subgroups of the doors so that all selections read to the All settings. The Texturize Preview button will display any textures that have been applied to the material that your selected door style is being made out of. Cabinet layout is very important for efficient drawing. Here is where you will enter the sizes that your cabinet carcasses will default as when you pull them from your catalogues. The base height is the overall height of your floor cabinets, including the kick, but not including the bench top thickness. The base depth is the depth of your floor cabinet carcass, not including the door thickness. The upper height is the height of your wall cabinets. The upper depth is the depth of your wall cabinets, not including the door thickness. The tall height is the overall height of your pantry cabinets, including the kick. The tall depth is the depth of your tall cabinet carcass, not including the door thickness. The vanity settings work just like the base settings and will apply to any cabinets that have been saved in your catalogue as a vanity class type cabinet. It is important to understand that the depth of your end panels will read to these depths first, then look to your construction method for the amount to add to the front of the applied panel, and then to the door selections for a door material thickness to calculate their finished size. Ideally, the tall height here will work out the same as the room layout wall height minus the soffit height to ensure that the tops of your wall cabinets will line up with the tops of your pantries. Now it's time to set the countertop properties. The Materials tab is where you select the material schedule for the bench top. The Profiles tab is where you can specify an edge type for your bench top, however you do not have to, and if you leave it blank the edge will simply be square. The Countertop Layout tab is important for utilising the Auto Build Counter feature when drawing in Cabinet Vision. The face overhang is the amount you want to add to the front of your base cabinet carcass to give you the finished bench top depth. The end overhang is the amount you want to automatically apply as overhang on the end of a cabinet run, but it will only be applied when auto building a bench top over a base object that has been specified to have a finished end. The minimum depth is the smallest amount you want to permit cabinet vision to auto build a counter at. The Add Splash option should be checked if you want a splashback to default on every benchtop edge that touches a wall. The Splash Height and Thickness will need to be filled in if you have the Add Splash option checked. The Top Thickness is the finished thickness of a bench top. If the level of cabinet vision you are using does not have these fields here in the Layout tab, the information will come from the Material Schedule and an additional Construction tab that would be available in that instance. Finally, you have the ability to set properties for default mouldings you might like to use in your job. Mouldings are used when you require details such as capping, skirting or cornice. These can be set up via the Moulding Manager. That concludes our tutorial on Cabinet Vision job properties. Thank you for watching.